What makes a professional photographer is consistency. A professional photographer is able to go out in most lights and get a shot. It may not be the shot they're looking for, but it is the shot that they can use or sell. It's especially important when somebody's paying you to do that. Now for a travel and wildlife photographer, I think it's almost more uh, important to be able to work in multiple lights. We get a short time and have to capture an entire city or an entire area of a country. An amateur can fluke shots that are better than a professional can hit once in a while, but it's that once in a while which is the difference between a professional and an amateur. To be honest with you, I'm still not that confident about asking for money. To me, every time I produce a work, I'm nervous that it's not up to scratch. All professional photographers spend far too much time looking at their own images and they see all the flaws. We see them, we criticize them, but that's what helps us grow. So, for anybody just starting out, yeah, it's nerve wracking. And every time I send someone a bill, I worry about it. But remember, you've worked hard, you've trained hard, and you've taken a lot of photos to get where you are. You deserve that money. Just trust yourself and trust your art. Look, over the years I've heard, had some wonderful things said to me and I really do appreciate it from everybody. The best thing that ever happened to me though was in the beginning of the opening of this exhibition. This exhibition's about showing the wonder and the beauty of Africa. I had a South African come to the op opening and she came up to me with a tear in her eye at the end and told me that my work has quote, opened her eyes to the rest of Africa. Honestly, that's what I do it for. It's the showing people the beauty of the world. Um, you know, I call my work Infinite Wonder because no matter where I go, and it doesn't matter if it's around the corner, if it's another country, or my backyard, there's so much beauty in this world. And if I can open someone's eyes to that, that's why I do photography. And someone said I did that, I impacted them. And that was the nicest thing that anyone has ever said to me about my photography. I think the biggest no-no in photography, especially for travel photographers or wildlife photographers, is not respecting your subject. I've seen it countless times being both pros or just tourists, climbing on monuments, baiting an animal, teasing an animal, crossing the do not cross line just to get the shot or just to get the selfie, which drives me even more mad. We're there to show people the world. We're not there to ruin, destroy, or disrespect what you're shooting. And that goes for people as well. You see my work, I shoot animals, people's architecture, landscape. That's what a travel photographer does. Every person I've ever shot, I've created a relationship with. I talk to them, I ask them if it's okay, and then I take the photo and I always show it to them. And if I can, I send it to them. Not always possible in the places I shoot, but it's what I do. So it's probably true in all aspects of life, but respect is the most important thing. So disrespecting somebody or something is probably the biggest no-no I can think of in photography. I've shot many photos in my life, um, and this was probably the hardest question you asked me. I went through my whole catalog over the last couple days, and as everyone says, the ones that just jump out at you are probably your favorites. I found it really funny that almost one of my first, uh, it wasn't even a professional shoot, although I ended up getting it published. I was lucky enough to go down to Antarctica and I was working down there as a visiting scientist for six months. So I was able to access these albatross and the seals for months. One day in spring as the snow melted, two albatross came in and they were doing their mating dance. I spent about an hour shooting them and the result was these two albatross with their wings spread doing their mating dance. And when the mountain's behind it, it's absolutely one of my favorite photos ever. Ironically, some of those shots got published, but not that one. But it's still my favorite and it's one of the few that are actually on the wall in my home. One of my other favorite photos actually makes up this exhibition. This photo is just so special to me, as much for the memories behind it, as much as it is colorful and expressive. We walked five days in the desert of Mali along the Dogon Escarpment to visit that village. And at that point, we met the chief hunter who we were talking with 
in sign language and an interpreter. Just having a good old chat. And then he eventually stood up and showed me his flintlock, which has been in the family for hundreds of years. Fired it, I took the photo, and you can even see the muzzle or the flint flare. It's just one of my favorites and it makes me smile every time I see it. My third took a couple of years ago in Cervantes WA. We were up at the Pinnacles and we were watching the storm come in over sunset, which was what we were hoping to shoot. Maybe spent an hour there lining up this shot, watching the clouds roll in. And then almost suddenly the clouds all but disappeared, but the light turned purple. And it created this really surreal, almost moonscape, unreal shot. It's completely unmanipulated, but I absolutely love it. My fourth favorite shot. We were in Cambodia and it was the Festival of Lights, Buddhist Lent. It's a month-long celebration that culminates in one night of fireworks and creates these bamboo hot air balloons, puts a little tallow candle underneath, lights it. Part of launching this balloon is they respect their ancestors and make a wish for the future. I think right now that picture is so poignant because everyone is in this COVID holding pattern and they're wishing for the future and we're remembering times past. But the look on his face of complete happiness and the welcome we had at this festivals of tens and thousands of people, it was just such an emotional moment for me and I really believe it came out in the photo. I guess my number one pro tip is plan the shot before you pick up the camera. Doesn't matter if I'm in a city or doing a landscape or an animal shot. I know what I want to shoot before the camera hits my eye. So you take control of the composition by doing that. You know what your depth of field is going to be. You know where you're going to place your subjects and you know what's going to be in the background. Plan the shot before the camera comes to your eye.